Okay, this is a CPR uh, for the adult, for the adult patient. Uh, you're on initial approach of the patient, you can gain some pertinent information by just a general visual understanding of what's going on, the patient's color, does the patient appear as though he's breathing. So as I'm walking up to the patient, I'm looking for chest rise and fall, I'm looking to see if his eyes are opening or closing. And when I get to him, if it doesn't appear as though he's awake, I'm going to shake him, sir, sir, can you hear me, can you hear me, are you awake? At that point, if we don't get any response, uh, we're going to assess, we're going to look for chest rise and fall, we're going to listen for air movement through the mouth and the nose, and we're going to try and feel for a breath on the side of our cheek by doing this. We're going to sit there and, and wait for a couple seconds to assess to make sure that the patient's not breathing. If the patient's not breathing, I'm going to have my, my partner here reposition the airway and reassess. In the event, now also bear in mind when you're opening the airway, we're going to use a head tilt chin lift because this is a medical patient. If it was a trauma patient, you would typically use the jaw thrust maneuver in order to, uh, to avoid manipulating the cervical spine in any way or, or potentiating any types of problems that might already be existing due to the trauma. Uh, at this point, we're going to say that the patient's not breathing on his own, and I'm going to instruct my partner here to administer two breaths. and then reassess the patient. We're also going to check for a pulse after those two breaths, and if there's no pulse, we're going to establish CPR. Uh, with hand placement, one heel of the hand over the sternum between the nipple line, the other hand on top, and we're going to do 30 compressions. So, one, two, three. And then we're going to ventilate the patient again twice. We're going to make sure that 911 was activated if we're outside of the hospital or away from the ambulance. And if there is an AED in the area, uh, such as the mall or like malls or airports, we're going to make sure that the, uh, the AED is, is uh, brought to the side of the patient with us as well. And until then, we're going to continue CPR. Thirty. All right, and that's pretty much it. We just continue CPR at uh, 100 compressions per minute, uh, preferably anywhere from 10 to 12 uh, ventilations within that same time frame. Uh, after every five cycles of CPR, we're going to check a pulse and we're going to continue to do CPR until the AED arrives. Once the AED arrives, if it does, if we're pre-hospital or uh, if we're in the ambulance, we're also going to attach the patient to the monitor and assess uh, with our defibrillator pads for for any type of uh, shockable rhythm and continue CPR throughout. That's about all I got for you, man.